To begin, let's start by launching Visual Studio 2010. In here, I'm going to start a brand new Silverlight project. I'm going to name it Zam Combo Editor Sample. Now that we have our main page up, let's go over to the toolbar and drag over our combo editor. Once we have the control onto the form, I'm just going to resize it so that we can see uh, more of the content inside and just position it a little bit more. And I'm also going to add a reference to the Silverlight assembly that's shared. Now that we have that onto the form, let's just run this. Okay, now that this application is loaded, you'll see we have our combo editor on the form in a Silverlight plugin. You'll notice as I right click, it's a Silverlight application. But you'll see that there's no items inside of it yet. So we're going to have to add some items to it by binding it to some data. So let's go back to the application and we are going to create a class that is going to provide us some data. I'm going to call this class data util. And I actually have the code ahead of time so that you don't have to see me type any of this out. I also have, a, have to add a couple more using statements. Okay. Now to bind the data to the combo, let me go back to my page. I'm going to have to add a, an XML namespace uh, local to my current sample and then let me bring it in as a resource and I'm going to call it data util and close that and I'm going to then bind the combo editor to this resource do that I'm just going to set up a binding to my static resource data util and then the path I'm going to link up to the products once I set the item source I also have to set another property which is going to be display member path I'm going to set that to product name and now our combo should be bound to some data. So let me launch this. Once this loads, you'll see that now you have your list of items, your products, and the product's name being displayed in, as each of the items. Now that the combo is bound to some data, we're going to start making some property changes so we can see a couple of the other features of this control. We're going to work on things like multiple selection, so you can select multiple items, enabling checkboxes, how to do a different type of uh, filter condition. You'll see as I type the letter O, it's only filtering to one item because it's doing a starts with, which is the default. I'll show you how you can do a contains condition instead so you can filter by different criteria. To do that, let's go back to our code. To enable multiple selection, all you have to do is set mul allow multiple selection to true. It's very straightforward. As far as checkboxes, all you have to do is set checkbox checkbox visibility to visible. For the last feature of doing a different type of filter condition, I actually have to write a little bit of code. So let me do this. And I have to add a items filter. It 
this condition is actually located in the Silverlight base assembly. So let me actually bring that in. So we actually have to add the XML namespace to the base. So we'll find that there. And then we just have to come back down here and add the condition. Contains. And that's it. So what we're going to do, let's run this. And you'll see as I type O, not only did you get the first one that you had before, but you'll see that you get all the other items that match that criteria because they're now doing a contains. You'll also notice that we enabled multiple selection and you'll also see a checkbox so that if you wanted to have multiple items being selected you can now do that and you could also select the items as well to control that behavior. The last thing I want to cover today is how to actually customize this view. You'll notice that you have the product, I product names that are being displayed. What if you want to display additional information? How would you do that? Let me go back to the code to show you how. Now that we're back to our page, let's add a template to the combo. I actually have this written out here as well. So I'm going to drag this over to the combo and just plop it in right there. Let me actually explain what we're doing. We're adding an item template and we'll, we'll, you'll see that we're specifying a data template. In the data template, we have a grid. And then we have grid column definitions and row definitions so we can lay out our content. In addition to that, you'll see that there's four text blocks being used. You'll see one is the product ID, one's the product name, so these are going to be the labels. And then you'll see there's two additional text blocks for the actual values. For the, so each of the product IDs and each of the product names. And then they're all laid out. So let me launch this. And once I do that and come back to our combo, you'll see that you have a very different display because we specified a data template. And you still have your checkboxes to enable the multiple selection. And everything else still works the same. Even if I type my O, you'll see that it does the filter based on the contains. And everything else is functioning correctly. So I hope you enjoy this demonstration on the XamWeb Combo Editor. I hope you come back to check for additional content. Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com.